Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to share with you how we set up our fully automated uh, newsletter generator on zero budget. So for business like Random AI or The Morning Blue, not only they have millions of subscribers, they actually made millions of dollars from publishing newsletter. So the question is how you can run a newsletter without eating up all your time. So by the end of this video, you will be equipped to streamline your publication process as well as uh, basically maximizing your newsletter output as well as without spending all the time uh, from your end. So this is the entire workflow we are building. Uh, but before we diving into the each steps, let's take a look at what we get in the end. So what we get in the end is this uh, newsletter written into a Google Doc uh, every single day. Uh, apparently, you still need to format it, uh, but as any generative AI solution, it does this 80% uh, heavy lifting while you can keep the control over it. So this entire, this is the entire workflow, it is a single workflow uh, we are building, and on a high level, you can see it in three steps. The first step is on the left, where we collect all the articles from the sources we subscribe to. And the second step is we filter those articles for the most relevant and timely ones for our newsletter. And the last step is to uh, basically convert all those quality articles into, into a newsletter and write it into a Google Doc. Uh, because I wanted to keep this entire workflow completely free, uh, we didn't use any paid API uh, paid RSS API service. Instead, all we used was a list of websites that we actually want to curate content, subscribe content from. So if you don't already have one, you can just use this example where we actually use it for our AI newsletter. And also you can find the JSON template for this entire workflow somewhere near this video. So the first step is to get all the articles from the news websites that we subscribe to. And we need uh, eight notes to do this. You, you don't have to do this this way. It's just a way figured out this is how we do it. Uh, so up to this remove duplicates, all those notes is to get all the articles. I'll walk you through it, the purpose of each node, then like what parameters you need to pay attention to. So first, we want to trigger this entire workflow uh, regularly, whether it's daily or weekly. And you can, if you have a very specific time, you can set up like a cron job. Um, here, we just set it as 2 p.m. every day. And the second step is we get all the site, uh, which I will explain more detail. Like you don't, you not only need the RSS, uh, you also need some uh, details inside the RSS to make this work robustly. So the next node is just to parse out to actually read uh, the content from that RSS. If you are if you are not familiar with how RSS works, is each website they can have multi RSS feeds, and you can subscribe to them, and they will just send you the recent one. But you don't directly uh, like the free version. You don't directly filter from there. You read the content, and then you manually filter them basically. So from there, we get the actual uh, like each article information and this is where the tricky part we will handle later sometimes we get the entire article directly sometimes we only get the url but either way what we want to do next is to merge the website metadata with uh, each article so that's where we extract the site name to so that we can match with the uh, website metadata which is already in the google sheet and once we merge them there then we just have this extra step which is not always necessary, but because some website they publish multiple RSS feeds, and those feeds have a uh, duplicated uh, article that shares ID, so we have this uh, extra step. So all those parameters are already included uh, uh, in the template, so you don't need to worry about. Uh, the, the ones that you want to know about are probably those um, three nodes, uh, because others are like it just has to be exactly that nodes, and add the rest that, that I'm explaining have a little bit of design in it. You don't have to do this way. So if you want to tweak anything, you better know how it actually works. Uh, so this one we use the code node, so we can apply regular expression to extract uh, the data, uh, but you can do this separately, manually as well. Uh, the next one is we use a position to merge the extracted uh, metadata as a key so that we can merge with the original table. And this is using a position merging because we don't have, we, we, we just created the key, we don't have the key yet. And the next step is we actually use a key to query all the data to merge them all together. Um, yeah. That's all for the first step. So this is the second step of this entire workflow where we filter for articles that are like most recently published out of all the articles that you can query from the source. Uh, in the beginning, uh, 
the first five nodes of those two like timer nodes with this filter is to actually filter out the article, but it, it doesn't directly get the content yet. We just want to filter out for the ID. Uh, this is a tricky part of this entire workflow is like for a filter to work, you need to, to have the content and you also need to have the definition of the filter. Uh, so it makes sense to have those two branches, but this branch like not intuitively makes sense at least to me in the beginning. Uh, the reason is like in the like if you are in a testing mode, you can just click downstream node. They will pull the workflow of the upstream. But in production mode, the this branch will not be triggered unless it it's connected to something in the upper stream and it could be just an empty output but it need to be triggered by something so technically this branch those four nodes does not have to be here does not have to be triggered by this remove duplicates it just needs to be true somewhere so you could put them here and we put it there just because we feel it's logically closer to this filter because it defines the filter that's the only tricky part of this entire design the next is once we got those articles there are two situations I forgot if I mentioned them before. Uh, one situation is the article directly in the RSS raw data, where, uh, so here is the if node, uh, then we'll just directly get the data and merge with another source down the road. The, another situation is the RSS only have the link to that article, and then that link also could include some other information that we don't need, like the ads, the promotion, video stuff, so that's where we also need to get the tag of the actual body of that article to extract from the article, uh, from the HTML. Otherwise, we will get a lot of data that, because later will fit into the uh, GPT model. And if we don't clean up the body, it can still work. First, it can time out and have more crash. And second, it just eat up our tokens. So that's the reason like we want to keep the input as clean as possible. And once we got those clean up the second source and merge with the top source, then this is our last step where the first one to, so the we cleaned out the row and the, we also want to clean out the columns, which is the, what this step is doing is condense all the data. It just remove some unnecessary columns that because we need to keep tracking of everything previously, we kept those metadata. And now we're in the final step, we don't need those data anymore. Uh, so the next node is, so this entire is the last node. We are distilling all the articles in the newsletter. Uh, so this node is where we want to merge all the articles into a single piece of data so that we only need to query the GPT once. Uh, then the, we, so this is step, again, we don't have to use a, uh, agent here because we literally we, we we are not we don't have a knowledge hub and we are not taking any actions we literally just use a model uh, the reason we use it is first the dance, like later we we may want to develop that direction and second if we have this ag uh this agent then we can keep the prompt on the agent level so if we want to test with other models we can plug and play easier the last step is just uh, to write the newsletters output of the model into your google doc so this entire workflow, like you don't, uh, all the parameters come with it. Once you load import into your workspace, the only thing you need is to connect this Google Sheet. And once you connect this Google Sheet, it should use the same connection for this Google Doc as well. As long as like on your GCP, both services are enabled. If you're not familiar with that, like same as every single node, it's very easy to just go to their doc. <coughs> So one thing is connected with this sheet the you can download the example again. And second separate connection is this uh, open AI is make sure you use your own model. That's pretty much to set up this entire workflow. It's really fun to build them from scratch. But if this is not the focus of your business and you want a custom implementation of this template, uh, message me on LinkedIn so we can take a closer look at what's the best for your situation. See you next time.